Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Ireland Under-21 International Simon Power, also of Norwich City FC. Firstly, Simon, thanks very much for coming in, in studio, on your holidays, just before you meet up with the Under-21 squad. But uh, just kind of wanted to do a bit of a background profile on yourself, um, just because some people might not know who you are. So just to kind of, how your, your career started, when you started playing, who you, who you started playing for. Yeah, so I'm, I'm born and raised in Greystones, County Wicklow. So that's where I would have spent most of my, my career um, with Greystones United. So I would have started playing maybe I was five or six years of age. Um, played there until about, I think it was under 11s, where I sort of made my first move. Um, Joe, St. Joseph's Boys, just down the road here, they were, they were interested. So I signed for them. So that was sort of the first big step of my short career. Um, so far. So far. Um, so I stayed there for about two years, really good, um, really enjoyed my time there. But then I just decided to go back to Greystones after another couple of years, start playing with my mates again and to develop. So stayed there for about three years, then after that signed for Cabin Teeley. So I signed there when I was, I think I was 16 at the time. And then I think it was the year after was when Cabin Teeley got their League of Ireland licence. So it was a great time to be there. Um, so first year I was there, I played under 16s, then the next year I played under 19s League of Ireland. Yeah. And then I think it was sort of halfway through that, I got called up to the first team. I think I would have been 17 at the time, so I was playing the second division below the Archer City League. And Not bad at 17? No, like I seemed to impress when I was, when I was up there. So leading on from that, um, UCD came knocking on the door um, and ended up signing for them next year. So I think I would have been 18 when I signed for them. And this at the time, I was also sort of focused on my studies as I come towards the yeah. end of my uh, years in secondary school. And I think sort of like a sports scholarship was on the cards. So at that time, I was sort of getting interest from England. So a few few clubs would have a few meetings with at the time. I won't mention them, but because um, I wanted to focus on my leaving cert, get that yeah. out of the way. And it's kind of a bit, sounds a bit similar to kind of Gavin Bazzuno. I know he eventually moved to Man City, but there was, yeah. he didn't, he kind of held off because of the leaving cert. So it kind yeah, of I'm like sort of yeah, going the same road because I wanted to get my leaving because if it, if when I went over to England, things didn't go well, I was some sort of fall back on. Yeah. So that's what happened. But of um, course, because as, as well as that, there's always the, you know, um, the stats of how many don't make it and stuff like that. So that's mm-hmm. obviously going to be in the back of your mind and your parents' mind as well. I'm yeah. sure they had a big say in, in what you were doing. Yeah, that was definitely a big fact because like, yeah, you see like loads of lads going over when they're 16 and it's quite a big number that actually end up coming back home and yeah. end up playing the Air Tristy League. So that's something that, that I didn't want to happen because I obviously want to be successful in my football career. So, so yeah, when I was at UCD, um, finished my leaving cert, got offered a sports scholarship and then I decided to just take a year out um, I, was going to, I ended up working, I was working on the building site um, after my leaving cert and I was just going to focus on football, purely on football and luckily enough. Um, so, so, you're, so you were working part time on a building site and playing for UCD then say yeah. a couple of times a week or like training a couple of times a week and then playing a match on say a Friday night then? Yeah, literally so I would have, yeah, part time working on building sites and I think it was the one game that sort of caught, eye, caught the eye of Norwich was the under 19s final. Uh, we played against Galway and it scored two goals, one, one screamer, and got man the match. I think that caught the eye of a lot of English clubs. And then I'll I think it was like, to do it, it? Yeah, I know. So, like, it's just like, suddenly, just after that, I was getting called up to the under, under 19s Ireland squad. And loads who, of was, who was the manager at that point? Well, it was actually my. I, I played my, my debut was at under, under 18s. Which was Tom Mowen. Oh, okay, yeah. He seems to be doing a really good job at the underage levels. No, yeah, Tom's very good. Yeah. Tom's a very good coach and got on very well with him. And he seemed to have great faith in me, so he selected me nearly every every time there was like international games coming up. Um, but I didn't play that much because I was getting injured yeah. uh, quite a bit at the time. So I missed out on the under-19 European the championships. Um, but yeah, no, Tom, Tom's a very good coach. And after that, after that under 19s final, just Norwich came knocking on the door. And what what was that like? Because I know you'd finished your leaving cert at that point. Yeah, finished leaving cert because it would have been, I don't know, it would have been November time. Yeah. 
So it, it would have been just this, 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 coming out off the summer after doing Yeah, it. so yeah, yeah, just finished the Leamster that summer and then I was working building for maybe only like three months or so. Yeah. And then, yeah, Norwich came knocking on the door and they said they want me over for a trial. So I think I would have went over was in November, like nearly two years ago. Went over for, it was, it was well, meant to be a week. What what was your what was your thought, uh, your, your train of thought at that moment, like when you knew that they were interested? I couldn't believe it, to be honest, because I'd never been on trial before over in English school, because you see all the lads going over when they're like sort of 15. Yeah. So it was a bit strange going over it when I was, I think I was 19 maybe, and going over on trial. So obviously there was a bit of nerves going over to a big club over in England. And so I went over for, which was meant to be a week, but I ended up staying for like about three weeks because they're very impressed. Um, and then after that, uh, they said they're very keen on signing me. And that January, that's what I ended up signing. So since then, I've been there for about a year and a half. Yeah, it, it, it was. Was it like a manager or anyone like that that you met that made you go like, "Oh, this is the club for me" type of thing? I know you were on trial, but yeah. you know, someone come have a chat with you to say like, "All right, we want you" type thing. Well, yeah, it would have been the under twenty three coach at the time, and obviously Nars they have a very strong contingent of bringing Irish players over there. Yeah. Um, did, and that did that play a factor as well? I know Adam Eid is there. Um, I don't know how long he's been there, but I know he's been there. And you know, I think he he was nominated for Premier League uh, to Premier League two yeah, player, uh, player player of the year, wasn't he? So I mean, and there's him, and then there's obviously Andrew uh, Omar Bamadeli and Josh Jersey then as well, who came over as well. So there seems to be a good kind of contingent of Irish now there as well. Yeah, there is. They bring. They seem to throw. They they show strong faith in. Young Irish talent, which is good to see. Um, yeah, because obviously I play with I play with Adam Ida. Um, so it's Ida, sorry. No, I think it's actually, I think it's actually Ida. I think he slides me. Ida, Ida. But we yeah. all say Ida. I'm going to keep calling okay, him Ida. Just, just to wind the wall. <laughs> um, but I played with him like with under twenty three this whole season. Like he's been on fire. Was it? Did he? Did he say anything to you? Like, did you have any contact with him? No, I didn't. Because like, I didn't. I never spoke to him before. Okay. I just thought you might have been in a underage kind of. Uh, Squad with him or something. Previously. No, no, never, never played him before. Likewise with um, Josh and Andrew. Yeah, I um, forget that they're younger than you. Yeah, because yeah, they would have been more. Yeah, because they're a good few years younger than myself. Yeah. So they would have been more around the under 18s. Whereas Adam sort of he was under 18s at the time when I first signed, but he progressed to under 23s because he's performed so well and he, he's been thriving at that stage. Yeah, we're well, just kind of on that though. So I, I kind of cut you off. Sorry about that. Um, you were saying about you kind of what made you decide to sign for Norwich. I think it's just like just the state of the art academy there, like just the whole training ground, the academy was just so such a step up to what I was used to, and it was just something I just couldn't say no to because like ever, ever since I was young, I wanted to be a professional footballer, and this I think this is like the best chance to go over. I had the leaving cert in the bag, and I think I was probably playing my best football at the time, so it's something I just could not say no to. And Norwich is a very n nice place as well to live in. It's a city, but it's very remote. It's in the countryside, but it's a very nice place to live in. Yeah, Wes Hulan has nothing but good things to say, and they've nothing but good things to say. Yeah, and that's, that's also another um, factor why I went over, because Wes, he would have only would have been there for about six months, because he obviously, he left. Yeah. Um, so I would have had a uh, good few chats when I was in, would have, when I went over first initially. Mm. Very and nice guy, had a friend of the show. Very good lad. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, Wes is a top lad. Yeah. So did, did he did he have like a... I suppose uh, you were saying about a chat with you. Would he, would he, you know, some days you might be homesick or whatever, which is perfectly normal. Would he ever have a chat with you or whatever, just see how you're doing and stuff like that? Uh, just I think like when I initially went over, just would have had a chat about him and just what what's life like as a footballer and living in Norwich. Yeah. And like, because we were sort of would have gone through like similar stage when we were younger. He yeah. played League of Ireland, he was with Shells. And he went over late. Yeah, then, quite so. late, so like myself. So we sort of, we similarities in that sense. And obviously he's a top class player, isn't he? Yeah, um, uh, he's absolutely idolised there. Like uh, he obviously had his testimonial there recently enough, but yeah. uh, I think it was a sellout as well, and they, it, it helped as well with the with the team uh, parading around the, the city as well after obviously winning the championship. Mm -hmm. What well, you obviously you've signed you signed for Norwich, and then you went on loan then to FC Dordrecht in Holland. Yeah. So tell us how that came about and how the season was for yourself. Right. So obviously I signed. Last last January, uh, when the Irish played about a year under twenty three football, and because I was doing so well at under twenty three, they Norwich just sort of felt okay. I'm ready to progress, 
and I was sort of pushed into the first team squad. So it would have been November last year where they, they pulled me aside and we're like, right, Simon, we're going we're gonna to send you out on loan in January because we feel like you're ready to progress in the next stage. And they, the academy manager said, we're going to send you out to Holland. And you know, initially I was sort of like a bit godsmacked. I was like, Holland, of all places, I thought it would have been sort of like in England. Yeah. Just a local, uh, like local a, team. A, a lower division. Yeah, lower division yeah, team. But like, I think why it was Holland, they sent, they sent out two lads who are the same age as me. Uh, who would have been playing? Who would have been playing twenty three football? They sent them at, out loan like the year before to Holland, and they did so well there. Yeah, and they just thought that I could potentially have the same success if I went over there at that time. Yeah. So one lad, he the first guy that went over, he would have played second division Dutch Dutch football, and he he just thrived at it. He's now in in around the first team now. He's started loads of games in the championship this season. He's flying now. Yeah. Also. Another guy who's on the under twenty three's team, he went to the team Dordrecht that I went to at yeah. the start of the season, and um, but he ended up doing his ACL and he was out for like nine months or so. So he's actually still currently in his rehab. Yeah. So I think it's sort of sort of a replacement. So I went over in January, and because he was doing well when he was over there, so I went over, did like a sort of like almost like a trial, see what it was like in December time. Really enjoyed it. The standard of football was was a big step up. And Dutch lads are just sort of different class. Is, now. is is the Premier League to a, a different standard to maybe the the I know it's the Dutch second league, but is it is there much in the difference there? To be honest, Probably not really. Well, there's a, yeah, that's the main thing because it's, it's men's football as well. It's it's com- more competitive and just have some more, more physical. technical. I would say. Too, yeah, that's it? that's the first thing I noticed when I went over. Like the lads, they're all so technical. Because I remember, I think that's sort of the main difference between like Dutch and Irish lads, like. I remember speaking to one of the lads on the team when he was like nine years of age. He was training like, I think he said like eight times a week. And like, I was just like, that's the difference between young Irish players and Dutch players. I think at the time when I was nine, I would have been playing or training like no more than twice a week, once a week. Yeah. I think that's just the difference. Like I, I think that as well, um, sorry to cut you off, is, it, it, is something that Damien Duff was hammered about over here. That the fact that he, he was trying to drill home that you need to be practicing this many times. A week to be to be making it like the, the rest of the clubs or the rest of the countries are doing it this way yeah because I, I actually read that that interview and like he's dead right to be honest like obviously i've been over to holland now and seeing that one of the like the the lads there they were training like eight times a week and duff duffer was saying like we need to be doing the same like he's dead right in fairness cause, like at that time i was only doing twice a week and that that is the difference like he i think he's bang on there yeah, and and just like with the season you had Holland, it was different. Did they? Did you kind of look at someone like say maybe like Jack Byrne, who was kind of over there, done really well. I knew he was in the Eredivisie itself with Canberra, but you know you don't really hear too much of players, you know Irish players going abroad. So um, was it difficult maybe to still keep in say I know you're in the under twenty one squad now. Was it difficult to keep in Stephen Kenny's thoughts, or would he be in contact with you to let you know he was keeping an eye on you? Uh, well, going on the Jack Byrne topic, um, that would have definitely been a factor because obviously I would have looked in. He played for Cambour, who actually in my division I would have played against them when I was over in Holland, and he seems to who have done well and thrived over there playing Dutch football. I think he got into the Dutch team of the season that year. Yeah, <laughs> they do some like like team like team of the week or sort of team of the month every week. Yeah, and I think he he sort of he would have been in there like a couple of times. I think. Not so sure how many. I think times, he finished the season in the. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think he finished uh, in the team of the season. No way! Like that. That's something else. Like playing in air division against like the top players. Like shows how, how well he must have done when he was over there. Yeah, uh, and and he's obviously come back since. But uh, we'll touch on that a different time because we might have Jack on the show. So, but uh, no, kind of just on to Stephen Kenny then. Um, just in regards to him keeping an eye on you, would he be in touch with you a lot? Or what way did they, did it kind of come about? Yeah, he would have been kind of a, a few times. I think uh, when I first got called up, when we played Luxembourg, um, not sure when that was, around February, March time, I can't, I can't remember. But that's what, like, the first time he sort of came in contact with me. And like I was absolutely buzzing to get called up to play for my country. And it was the first time under 21's level. So, you know, I was buzzing now. Obviously, Stephen was the new uh, appointed manager. And 
yeah, unfortunately enough, I had to pull out of the training camp because I got injured, which I was devastated about. And for such a small injury, um, it ended up being, I was out for like six weeks or so. Because, you know, over in Dordrecht, it's a very small club and like they didn't have the same sort of like facilities or expertise as Norwich would have had yeah. over like physiotherapy wise of recovery. So it, it just sort of went on forever. And that sort of played a big part of sort of like how I played towards the end of the season. And uh, wasn't doing as well as I did at the start of the season because uh, just the injury just sort of affected me mentally. Yeah. What, what, was he on to you then about that? Yeah, yeah, he contacted me. Um, would have been like last month or, or almost six, 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 six weeks ago. So yeah. I came to, towards the end of the season. It's like how I was coping um, with my injury and how I was doing the last few games of the season. I said I was doing all right. And then he said, obviously, I'm in like, the picture for the Toulon tournament coming up. So bearing that in mind, I just sort of put myself into a local gym over in Holland and just sort of got myself so fit. And in the eyes that I got picked for this under-21 squad for the Toulon tournament. And luckily enough, I got picked, so I'm over the moon with that now. Yeah, it's, it's, and the good thing now is obviously is coming into the Toulon tournament. But as well as that, there seems to be a really, really good buzz with underage football in Ireland, especially the under-21s. Now, I know that you missed the Luxembourg game, but there was a real buzz about that, and even all over social media and everything like that. Like there was, The crowd was really... like packed out for Stephen Kenny's first game yeah. then there was you know the fact they were playing good football they were playing it out from the back and stuff yeah. like that is, is that is that something that you, you speak about amongst yourselves yeah it would be because obviously like it would be sort of renowned for Irish Irish football it's more it's not that technical we don't play mm, really, one. really tidy like football compared to other countries so if that's something Stephen Kenny sort of brought into the lads that we want to play out from the back for, be comfortable with the ball. He wants us to play like possession dominant football and just to be express ourselves on the ball and just be confident. And you could see that in the Luxembourg game. I think we, we dominated that game. I was watching over in Holland and I was very impressed. When I was watching it, I was like, it, it, it's an honour to be part of this very good team, very talented team, and also very young. See, I'll be one of the older lads now in the team. And you see some of the younger lads. Um, so like Jason Knight, he's a young lad, he's called up, I would have played with him in Cabin Teeley at the time. Yeah, he was on the bench, wasn't he, in the uh, playoffs? Yeah, I've seen that, so I, I do know Jason, because his younger brother would have played with my brother. So I know Jason from Cabin Teeley playing there. Obviously he's a top talent and it's first time getting called up to the under-21, so I'll probably, I'll be there to help him settle in if he's nervous or anything, so, so yeah. Yeah, but that's what I mean, it's just like, there's a really good t uh, group of, of talented Individual, well, not individual, sorry, talented players coming up now uh, with that under 21 team. How much are you looking forward to this Toulon tournament? It's supposed to be like the cream of the crop of the yeah. under 21s. Yeah, like sure, it speaks for itself. It's so prestigious, this tournament. And like if you look at like any sort of top international player that's playing nowadays, senior football, like they've been through this, they've played in this Toulon tournament. So like we're going to be playing against the best. And like I think we sort of undervalue ourselves a little bit. Because like we have top quality players on our side, so we have like every right to go out there and just express ourselves, and we're confident that we can progress into this out of our group. We have quite a tough group, like Mexico, China, Bahrain. So by no means it's going to be easy, but like we're really looking forward to express ourselves and hopefully be the first team to qualify to, out of this tournament. Yeah, it's it's so nice, and refreshing to actually hear players like uh, coming out and saying, you know that. That there is talent in Ireland because you, you hear it so much that we don't have the players this that and the other but it's so nice to hear the confidence of the younger players now even the under 17s they were all very confident about how they were going to go out you know they didn't lose the game in the years I know but to be fair they were unlucky in games with refereeing decisions and so on yeah. um, hopefully that doesn't happen to you guys but you meet up with the squad on Tuesday is it? Yes yeah, Tuesday How much, Are you buzzing for that? Yeah I can't wait to meet up with the lads because this time I'll be injury free and Hopefully I can uh, make my or make myself into the first team squad, starting eleven even, and because that's that's the main goal. Because obviously that I'm up against tough tough opposition, and there'll be a lot of competition amongst the team. But that's a good thing; it's healthy competition. So yeah, I'm just buzzing to meet up the lads now and get going. Absolutely. Um, well, on that note, I just wanted to say thanks very much for for coming in and having the chat. No and uh, maybe this time next year we'll we'll be chatting about maybe a major. Norwich debut with a bit of luck. 
Yeah, but, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks Absolute gentlemen. Thank you very right. much. Thank you.